Um, so Tom, where, where are you from originally? From London. Um, I had a very happy childhood. I was, I was brought up in south-west London, Wandsworth. Really? Wandsworth Common. Wandsworth, that's not too far from me. Okay. Where, where were you brought Ilford, up? Ilford, in Essex. Ilford, right. Well, it's the other side of the London. The other side. Apart from, that. <laughs> Apart from being the other side of the city. <laughs> it's the same city. It's the same city. But this is, uh, at that time, it was very, um, it was uh, an area which was not developed as it is now. Now it's very posh. It's very, very upper class. I, I would what say, what yeah. was it like when you grew up there? Well, uh, my mother, she bought a house um, in 1959, a lovely Victorian house with three storeys, a basement, and it was opposite a common, and we had a big garden. And I'm the eldest of five kids, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just beautiful. It was, I, have, I still dream about that house, funny enough. Must have been a big house. It was a big house, yeah. It had several uh, bedrooms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was typical brick-fronted with wooden interior, wooden floors. But lovely, it's a lovely house. My parents renovated it several times, but I have a lot of happy memories about that. Okay. So you've been living here, how long have you been living here? Well, uh, continuously from 86, 1986, because when I first came, I was still based in France. I had, the idea was to go back to France. I had a French girlfriend in Lyon. So I went back to Lyon. That's something we've got in common. <laughs> yeah, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> That would come out when I'm interviewed. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> so yeah. I won't go into that. Interesting, yeah. But, yeah, interesting. So, but by um, the time I managed to get back to France, we, were, we had separated. So I stayed in France for one year. Then I decided to come back to... And, and you came straight to Valencia? Yeah, I came back to Valencia. It's a town I knew. I liked, I liked the people, the lifestyle, you know, the typical things that the British people like, the, the weather. Weather, yeah. OK, so you've been here quite a few years. Is there anything that you still, after all these years, miss about the UK? I miss my family. I have, uh, uh, well, there are five of us. I'm the eldest, so I miss my brothers and my sister. I don't see them very often. Mm, they don't come out that, Not that as often. much as I like them to. You would have thought, uh, having a, a brother out here, they'd have come out, but they don't come out very often, maybe once every two years. So mm -hmm. I miss them. I miss their... I've got, a little, uh, got nieces and, and ne uh, nephews. I, I don't see them very often. Uh, what else? I miss, I miss a good English pub. Well, an English beer. <laughs> it's not the same, is it? No, Going to no. a Spanish bar and it's no, not. No. It's not the same. Not the same atmosphere. Yeah, it's a different atmosphere, and the beer as well. The beer is different. You know, I love the, the, the huge variety of beers. You know, just right, the bitter man or lager man? Bitter, like bitter, bitter. Real ale, real ale. Yes. IPA. Um, would you consider living anywhere else? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I, th I consider myself uh, settled. Settled here. Settled here. Yeah. I, I can't see myself living anywhere else. Every time I go back to London, I always ask myself, how would my life be if I was in London? And London is such a big city now. I've got so used to living in Valencia, which is a nice, sizable city. You can walk across it, cycle across it. London is just too big for me, mm -hmm. although it has fantastic cultural options, entertainment. It's just too big. I've got used to living in a small city. And I think London's a very expensive city. On my, on my salary, there's no, I, I wouldn't be able to live comfortably there. Uh, I'd have to probably live, I wouldn't be able to buy a house or I'd have to rent a flat, but yeah, I'd, have to rent, I'd have to live on the periphery. So it would be a, a difficult existence, I think. So Can you talk a bit, Tom, about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis here? I mean, first of all, what's your sort of official title? Well, my official title is Senior Teacher. Uh, and that really, it's a, it's a, it's a great job because it's, very vari it's a lot of uh, variety in it. For example, uh, there are day-to-day -day things which I do, like uh, teaching, uh, helping with level testing, sorting out problems, technical problems, book problems, anything like that. But I, I'm also planning things like I'm in the process of planning our new teach, our teaching conference, which we're going to be doing in September, mm -hmm. which I think you're going to help on. Hopefully, project. yes. yes. Uh, if I can persuade you. Yep. <laughs> and so it's organising that. It's sending off emails, contacting people, communicating, mm -hmm. uh, organising our, our in-service teacher, tra teacher training programme, contacting people, persuading people to do, give talks. Organising things. Is there anything you dislike about your job? Um, I think it's a, it's a job where you, you realise that you can't please everybody all the time. And sometimes you have to take decisions which are not accepted by some people. Mm -hmm. And you have to accept that you're going to, take, you're going to have to take some criticism. So, and that's something which, again, it's hard sometimes. Uh, sometimes I've had to put things into place which I'm not particularly in favour of myself, but it has to be done because it's part of the job. Yeah. So that's difficult as well. So. Sure. 
What do you do with your free time when you're not um, working here? Well, I've, uh, I love playing music. I play in, a, in bands with people. I couldn't live without music. Live for me what, what instruments do you play? Saxophone and guitar. But I, I don't play that. I go through uh, stages of a lot of activity and less activity with the guitar. The saxophone, I've got back into it. Uh, so I play that quite a lot. I play in a big band, well, two big bands. And I play with other groups of people, blues, whatever. Yeah. So I know you've travelled a bit, I know you've worked, well, through the council, you've been yeah. to um, uh, Zanzibar, you've been to... I was in Tanzania. Tanzania, in Tanzania that's in right, Zanzibar. yes. yes. Uh, can you talk yes. a bit about, about that? Well, that was an amazing uh, opportunity. How, how long were you there for? Six months. It was originally five, but they wanted... I was covering for somebody mm -hmm. who was in charge of the teaching, the academic manager. She had got married, and she suddenly realised she wanted to be with her husband, who was living in, on Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. So they had advertised for a post to cover this, this, uh, this post while the person who was going to take over was getting ready because he couldn't leave his post until August. So I had to, it was a kind of stopgap. And what was the, the job that you went to do? Well, it was a academic manager. I was in charge of the teaching centre. You were in charge of the centre? Yeah. It was, uh, I was in charge of the teaching centre, but there was a lot, it wasn't like here, there was a lot of stuff going on which we don't do in Europe. Mm. All the aid programme, there's a lot of aid for example. Did they have a, a large uh, teaching staff? Not very big, it's much smaller than here. I think about seven or eight teachers. It was a small, there was no young learners. That there are now, they've taken, they've started up with young learners. I discovered a really interesting writer from Zanzibar who's actually working in England now. He's a, he's a lecturer in, in literature at Kent University. What's his name? Well, his name, you haven't probably, no, you probably haven't heard of him. His name is Abdul Razak Gurna. Mm -hmm. And he's actually been He's not. He's been shortlisted for the Booker Man Prize, so he's a he is a, a recognised writer of, in English. I've read several of his novels, and they're, they're fantastic novels. They, he, uh, he he was born as a say in Zanzibar, and he does left. He, does he write about the island? And he writes about the island the culture. He, his character. And he, this book is about what interests me is the the cultural um, people from different cultures going to a different another culture. So he talks about people from Zanzibar living in England. Mm -hmm. And you know, as you, you and me, we are, we've had to adapt to Spanish culture. It hasn't been a huge trauma, but for some people coming from very different cultures, it's, it is a big difference. I'm always right. interested in, in how people adapt to different cultures. And he writes a lot about, about this, and he writes about Zanzibar, which I'm, I'm fascinated in as well. Because mm -hmm. so, it's got an incredible history, very interesting history. Apart from, um, from that, that trip, have you worked, any, worked or visited any other countries that stick out as yeah, being well, memorable? Well, uh, in Africa, I was lucky, I, I did travel a little bit. I went to Mozambique for a, for a weekend. I had to give a, t a course there on using IWBs to mm -hmm. the teachers there. And they were fantastic, they were lovely people. The local, they were Mo Mozambiqueños, they were from Maputo, which is the capital city. They spoke fantastic English. And they, I was helping them getting to grips, get to grips with the, the with new the technology. Yeah. yeah. They were lovely people, lovely, and they're just meeting people there. That's the way forward, I think, uh, using local people mm -hmm. in African context to deliver education. Mm -hmm. I was in South Africa, I was in Kenya as well, so I managed to travel a little bit. Uh, so I'd like, to, I'd like to, if if I could, I'd love to go back to Africa and see more of the countries there. If you could travel anywhere, if, if money or time were no object, would you go back to that part of the world, or is there somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, I would you're go back there, I would, because I, I saw a little bit of Tanzania, uh, I went on two safaris there, I went to Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. But it's enormous countries, twice the size of Spain, it's a million square kilometres. Mm. And there are places right off the beaten track where you could find incredible parks, incredible people, you know, there's things there which you... you know, Did you do any safaris? I went on two, two safaris. Two but safaris. Uh, safaris are a little bit commercialised now. Mm. Uh, what I didn't go on, oh, no, I'd like to go is to, to climb the Kilimanjaro. I'd mm -hmm. love to do that. It's quite expensive there. The kind of tourism there is expensive tourism. Yes. So I, it was either a safari or safari and Zanzibar or Kilimanjaro. Well, that gives you another reason to go back. Well, exactly, yeah. And uh, I, was, as I, said, I was working with some lovely people, and they gave me some presents when I left. Mm -hmm. This is a typical. This is a painting. That looks hand. hand uh, it's painted in enamel, enamel paint. So you, know, you can roll it up, it's very good. And it's on kind of canvas. And these are, so, these are Maasai, uh -huh. typical Maasai on a bike with a spear. I, I never saw anyone do this, but... <laughs> Amazing. So that was a, a little present they gave me, which I'm going to frame. So... I like it very much. It's lovely, yeah? The people, there, just the colours as well. The, the women wear very, very bright coloured dresses. It's like, it's like tropical birds, you know. It's, it's the, the kind of uh, 
the effervescence, the, the liveliness of the people. Mm -hmm. And they're very friendly people. Like, I'm going to show you that the Swahili handshake is like that, mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and like that. That's how people shake hands there. Yes, nice. that level of friendliness. They're very friendly people. Very okay. friendly people. Okay, now Tom would like to move into the quick fire hot seat part right. of the interview. So I'm going to ask you some very short questions and just tell me what you, what you think. The quick fire hot seat. So what makes you happy? I uh, play music with people. I love playing music, being in harmony with people. So that's working, working in situations where everyone gets on well, there's a good atmosphere. That's what I like. What annoys you? People who are rude. I hate rudeness. <laughs> I hate rude people. I was, for example, uh, I don't want to rant, but I was in Mercadona. No, no, rant, rant. I like it when, <laughs> when people rant. I was in Mercadona this morning and... In where, sorry? Mercadona, buying, going shopping, and the guy, I, I was on the, uh, the guy, the cash guy, he didn't say good morning. And he just, I thought, you could say good morning, you know, mm -hmm. you, could say, you could say hello, you know. There was no... He treated me like a thing, you know. I was going to, on the point of complaining, I thought, no, forget him. Yeah, I like, so I, I, like I, I hate rudeness, I hate people who are rude, unnecessarily, there's no point, you know. Absolutely. I think being polite is, is, is lovely, it creates a nice atmosphere, you know. Mm -hmm. well, that's an English hang-up, I think. What one thing, if you were to tell someone about yourself, would they perhaps find it difficult to believe? I was once a bus driver. <laughs> really? I drove a London bus, yes, before going to university. I applied to drive a bus, they didn't accept me because I had bad eyesight. Really? How long did you do that job? Well, it, it was a kind of uh, interim job I was doing it before. I was going to go back to university. So I got a, a job for about six months. In those days, there were jobs available. And I was driving a, a number 28 from Wandsworth Garage to Golders Green. And it's an old, <laughs> an old double-decker. It's, it's with a really huge uh, steering wheel. A big steering wheel, a double-decker with a and conductor. And a conductor. Conductor, yeah. Right. And there was a typical, it was the old RMS bus. So it had a, a platform at the back, you know. So. Uh -huh. So I was driving around London, you know. That's an experience. It's yeah. great, but it's, it's quite a boring job, actually. I, I, quite stressful as well. You're dealing with London traffic. And I was quite young at the time, so there's a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you had to do shift work. You had to work from uh, sometimes early morning shifts, sometimes late, late evening shifts. Have you still got your license active? Still got it, yes. So I've, you still got, I've got the badge. I've got the badge. In yes. theory, you could, you could go back and do that one day. In theory, I could, yes. Yeah. Sometimes I think about it. Oh, if only I could be a bus driver again. <laughs> yeah. I, have to give, I have to give a difficult presentation. I always think about oh, If I was a bus driver now, I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> I so. like it. Tom, if you could change something about your, your character, what would you change? I don't think you can change your character. I think uh, people, once you've got th through your early ch formative childhood period, I, don't think, I think that's you, basically. You can change your habits, but I think your character is set. Not in stone, you can change some aspects. But if I could change something, uh, I'd try to be a bit more assertive, perhaps. A bit mm. more assertive. Sometimes uh, I think in, my, in the past I've not asserted myself in Do you not think then that we're kind of a result of our habits? I mean, our character and who we are, do you not think, because I think that's a quote from somebody, that we are, in effect, our habits and what we do. Yeah. You could change your habits, I think, to a certain extent. Well, would yeah. that not then change kind of who you are as a person? Up to a point. I okay. think you have a core personality which you, don't, you will never change. There are aspects, peripheral aspects, which I think you can change, but at, at heart you're the same person. The same person. Which a is leopard, for, a for leopard, better or for worse. A leopard never changes its spots. I don't think so, no. As you've become older, um, are there things that have become less important to you and more important to you as time's progressed? For me, things which have become more important are nature, being with, being with nature, uh, being tranquil, you know. I, I'm going to sound like an old hippie now, but <laughs> I, I've less uh, frenetic, perhaps you can't become calmer, uh, less interested in acquiring material possessions. Sounds like you've become more patient. I hope I have. I mean, uh, sometimes I don't think I I think have. I'll become less patient. Yeah, I, you know, maybe I have a, a, an unrealistic view of myself, but I hope I have become more patient and uh, more tolerant, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I think one thing which has become more important is, is, is being tranquil, being you know, calm, nature, that kind of thing. And the do family you, as well. Do you, do you meditate? I don't. My sister once gave me a book on meditation, which I think I'd love to be able to do, because apparently it does give you incredible peace of mind and, and uh, concentration. It allows you to focus much more. Mm. I'm, I'm very dispersed. Sometimes I, 
I kind of find it hard to, to, to concentrate on one thing at a time. But, mm -hmm. uh, but I've never been able to do it. I think it's a question of discipline as well. I'm not very self-disciplined. So. How, how then did you discipline yourself to learn um, the saxophone, for example? That must have taken a lot of concentration yeah, and yeah, focus. Yeah, it does, it does, yeah. And I hours think, and hours of practice. I think it's very rewarding. Yeah, you have, to, you have to practice a lot. But the practice in itself is rewarding because uh, it's a breathing exercise. You're breathing, even if you're just playing scales. Just that breathing is very relaxing. It's, it's, kind of, it's a kind of meditation. It's a kind of meditation, I think. Yeah, because you're focused on You're the focused on one thing. If, you, if you're practicing or playing music co correctly, properly, you can't think of anything else. Anything else. You have to be so you can't let, you, you can't let your mind wander, otherwise you, can't, you otherwise lose you the thread. Yeah, you'll lose a thread. You have to be totally concentrated on one, about one thing you're doing. So it's, that's a form of meditation. So when you got good at playing the sax, did, do you get moments where you kind of feel in the zone, where you're exactly. kind of yes, you're yes. not focusing anymore? It's just no, it's you, just you're, it, you're, flows, it flows. It flows. Yeah. You get you've, you've got that. I've, it's the one or two. Yes. It's when I say, oh, I'll give you an example when when you're playing with other people and you have to make improvise. You're playing a solo and you're improvising. Sometimes nothing happens and you don't have much inspiration, but sometimes you get inspired. And that's found, it's like surfing. I've never surfed. I can imagine it's like mm -hmm. surfing. You're kind of just going on a roller, basically. And that's a lovely feeling when you're, when you're so creating something spontaneously. So it sounds like you have meditated, actually. That's, that's it. Maybe I have, and I haven't realised. Yeah. Um, finally, Tom, if you could go back to your late teens, early 20s, what advice would you give a younger Tom? Uh, when I was in my late, late teens, early 20s, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And uh, I didn't have much guidance. When my, I had issues with my, pet, my father, basically. He wasn't really there to help me, to guide me. And I think I wasted a lot of time. I dropped out of... I, I was in a, a grammar school. Um, I, I left in the, in the second, sixth year. And I kind of... Then I went back to study again to further education college. Mm -hmm. Then I went to university. I did like universities. I, I must have wasted about two, three years. I, you know, I played music, but I, I, I would have told myself, don't waste time, travel. If you, don't want to, if, you don't, if you don't know what to do, get a job with an NGO, with a charity. Do something creative, positive, constructive, but don't mm -hmm. waste your time. Mm -hmm. Travel. If you don't know what to do, travel. Get jobs going around the world, travel. That's At very, least you'll learn. That's what I tell myself. That's, I think that's very good advice for any younger people watching. If you don't know what to do, travel. Do something positive, creative, travel. Mm -hmm. Develop yourself, but don't just waste your time. But anyway, Absolutely. I agree. It's not the end of the world, but uh, <laughs> it's better to use your time creatively. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. I've really enjoyed it. Victorian house with three stories, basement, and it was opposite. London is such a big city now. I've got so used to living in Valencia, which is a nice, sizable city. You mm -hmm. So they have advertised for a post to cover this, this, uh, this post while the person who was going to take over was getting ready because he could
but it's an enormous country, it's like twice the size of Spain, it's a million square kilometers. Mm. And there are places right off the beaten track where you could find incredible parks.